Welcome to the K-12 Plus series of educational videos. This video is meant to be an overview for the Think Green module. For accompanying teaching materials and resources, please visit us on the web at www.abrcoutreach.osu.edu. The Think Green module is a compilation of four different experiments designed to teach you the relationship between genotype, phenotype, and environment. In previous modules, we have shown you that changes in the genetic code of an organism affecting its genotype can have direct and sometimes drastic effects on the physical attributes or phenotype of the organism. For example, corn with a mutated copy of the P gene loses its color and starts looking more like the yellow corn we buy in stores today. Other phenotypes caused by genetic changes can be more subtle or specific to a particular condition. In many cases, genetically modified organisms may look identical under normal conditions but show clear advantages under specific stress conditions. For example, these two varieties of corn look identical when grown in healthy soil but show clear differences when grown in soil with high levels of aluminum, with the aluminum resistant variety performing significantly better. Understanding the relationship between genotype, phenotype and environment it's critical to scientists attempting to develop new varieties of crops to combat the challenges of climate change, pollution, and water availability. Today, you will play the role of scientists in finding varieties of Arabidopsis that are both resistant and susceptible to four different kinds of environmental conditions, including temperature stress, salt stress, water stress, and heavy metal contamination. Because this is an advanced module involving multiple experiments, some consideration to experimental design should be given before starting. Each experiment in this module requires the planting of multiple seed types and also requires growing both an experimental treatment tray as well as an identical control tray which will not undergo any stress and will be used for comparisons at the end of the module. Thus, conducting a full set of experiments in the Think Green module will require the planting of 30 pots growing on 8 trays. Depending on your particular situation, you may decide to assign experiments to individuals or groups and combine results for the class later. For this module, you will need everything required to grow plants, including soil, pots, and trays, the seeds provided to you, heavy metals such as nickel, or copper sulfate and salt. Once you've gathered all the materials, you're ready to get going. Start by measuring the soil you'll be using into a Tupperware or other container. Then use your hands to break up any clumps and remove any debris from the soil. Leave it as smooth as possible. Depending on the soil you're using, you may also choose to add a slow release fertilizer such as Osmocote to your container. Next, add water to your soil and use your hands to mix it in, ensuring that the water is evenly spread throughout the entire soil container. Now it's time to prepare your pots. Start by placing a piece of cheesecloth at the bottom of each pot. This will keep your soil from escaping when you water them in the future. Next, you should scoop soil into each pot. Try to use your hands to pat down the soil. Your goal should be to fill each pot all the way to the top. As always, make sure to label each pot. Include your group number, date, and of course, the genotype of the seeds you are planting. Now you're ready to start planting your seeds. Start by sprinkling your seeds on a weigh boat or other plastic container. Use a Pasteur pipette to add water, and mix the seeds by pipetting up and down. This will resuspend the seeds in the water, which will allow you to use the same Pasteur pipette to place seeds in the soil, drop by drop. Try to include 9 seeds for each pot of soil. Once you're done planting all your seeds, place your pots into trays and cover them in saran wrap. The saran wrap will keep the soil from drying during the stratification step you'll be doing next. Place the trays inside a cold room or refrigerator. After 2-3 to three days of stratifying, take the plants out and place them in an area to grow, such as a light rack or lighted bench. Make sure to remove the plastic wrap from the trays. As the seeds germinate and grow, you may notice uneven number of plants between your trays meant for a stress or control treatment. 
depending on the size of the differences, you may choose to transplant seedlings to make the number of plants in the same genotypes more even across treatments. In order to transplant seedlings while they're still young, use a laboratory scoop or other tool to pick up the entire plant with soil. Avoid disrupting the roots and place the seedling in another pot of soil with a similar sized opening. Make sure to gently pat down the soil and water the area to ensure that the transplant takes. After about four weeks of growth, you're ready to start treatments. This video will give a short description of each treatment. For more details on the experiment, including timelines and chemical concentrations, please see the Think Green protocol. The water stress treatment is the simplest and requires only that you expose the plants to drought. You can do this by reducing the frequency at which you water, only doing so at the last moment when plants are wilting. In order to ensure that no one else waters your plants during this treatment, label your tray with a sign. Next we will discuss the salt and heavy metal treatments. Begin by labeling each of the treatment trays in order to keep others from inadvertently watering your plants. Next, use a balance to weigh the correct amounts of salt or heavy metal. Here we are using laboratory grade chemicals. However, table salt purchased from a supermarket or copper sulfate found at any pet store will also work for this experiment. Next, you can make the salt and heavy metal solutions by dissolving these chemicals in water. Dissolving the crystals may take some time. It helps to first dissolve the powder in a smaller amount of water in order to mix thoroughly before you fill your container to the top. From now on, you should use your salt and heavy metal solutions to water the treatment plants. The cold treatment requires plants to be exposed to negative 20 degrees Celsius. This is the temperature of most household freezers. Because it's difficult to fit an entire tray of plants in a freezer, you can perform the experiment by placing individual pots of soil into the freezer, one at a time. Make sure to time each treatment. Each pot should spend 5 minutes in the freezer. Make sure to not forget your controls. Keep them in normal growing conditions and remember to water them regularly. They will be critical in analyzing your results later on. For the next couple of weeks, observe your plants looking for the effect of your treatments. These effects should be most obvious around week 7 to 8. Analyzing the resulting phenotypes may seem overwhelming at first. What differences are due to treatment and which ones to phenotype? The best way to analyze your results is to perform a series of pairwise comparisons. Start by organizing your plants by genotype and treatment. In this water stress example, we have placed the Landsberg wild type plants on the left and the ABI11 mutant plants on the right. We have also labeled treatment and control pots. With the plants organized in this fashion, you can start your analysis. Start by comparing the different genotypes in their control treatments. Here, the wild type Landsberg plants appear to be taller than the ABI11 mutant plants and both appear to be healthy. Next, compare the effect of the water stress on Landsberg. Notice the diminished stature and yellowing leaves. Clearly, drought has a negative effect on plant health. Take notes on this effect. Finally, compare the effect of the water stress on the ABI11 plants. Here, the differences are large. Leaves are yellowing, the plant bolts have wilted, and have even started browning. Write down your observations. After you're done performing your observations, compare your notes on the effect that water stress has on both Landsberg and ABI11 plants. Are ABI11 plants more resistant or susceptible to water stresses? Perform similar analyses for each experiment and report your results. If you have any doubts, do not hesitate to ask your teacher or even compare notes with a fellow student. For a more detailed explanation of each experiment, including information on the origins of each of the genotypes, read the Think Green module protocol. For other great experimental modules such as this one, please visit us on the web at abrcoutreach.osu.edu.